I'm really honored that we get to have today with us someone who hasn't just won six Emmy Awards or hasn't just been a real voice of truth and isn't just a strong sister in Christ, but somebody that a lot of us are familiar with because of her highly successful television show on the Fox network. Uh, I uh, kind of feel bad in that uh, I got really excited when uh, I got to see some of uh, just uh, some of the things that are going to be a part of her brand new book that's coming out, The Nine Rules of Engagement, and uh, got excited when I found out that she actually wanted to come and talk about those nine rules. But this morning she said that uh, these are talks that I've given as a military brat all of my life, and these are nine principles that I want my own children to know. These are nine principles that, uh, that I talk about in a lot of different places places, but ultimately, uh, I mean, obviously in a moment like this, uh, I don't have time in 25, 30 minutes to talk about all nine. And so uh, she told me this morning that she typically just prays about like what the two or one or three principles are out of these nine life rules, nine principles that she can bring in who is in front of her. And today we're going to get to hear two of these nine principles uh, from Ms. Faulkner. And then uh, I want you to know on June the 5th, her book will be released throughout the world. And I know when you hear these two, you're going to want to get a hold of the other seven as well. It's just such an honor to have her here. Can we put our hands together for Harris Faulkner, everybody. Thank you so much. Wow. I have to tell you that when the Lord puts you right where you're supposed to be, there is a calm that comes over you. Normally when I look at 12,000 faces, I might have a pause, but I don't. I'm supposed to be here with you today. It is divinity. It is divine. It is a promise kept and I'm grateful. I applaud all of you at Liberty. Some of you are visiting, and I understand there's some military cadets among you, right? Wah. Um, you guys bless me with your presence. You have a dream, as Dr. King did, but it's specific to each one of you and, and your legacy as you go forward. I want to help you get there. We all need each other. Do you guys ever feel that because we believe that sometimes it's harder for us, that the struggle is there, that it's, as my mom used to say, the struggle is real, and sometimes it involves a bad hair day. <laughs> but it is real. So I want to give you some things that I know will work. I was born brat on an army base in Atlanta, Georgia. And what I, yeah, and what I didn't realize at the time and even on through my elementary and high school years, was that that military background was giving me the basis to fight whatever battles came along. Now, I just heard David Nasser call you freedom fighters. Well, whatever our battle is at the moment, you're going to need some weapons. And my nine rules of engagement, I might give them three today. I, if, if I can stay on time, I might give you three. I'm going to at least give you two. They're weapons that you want to use in your life. They're not benign, but they will fortify you in a very positive way. And the only people in your life who will be cut by them were those who probably should not have been there in the first place. So there I begin with my first rule of engagement. And you guys, fortunately, at Liberty University are already living it. Who are your special forces? Who are the handful of, of people, handful or so, of those in your inner circle that you roll with? It matters. Let me tell you why. In life, science has shown that the five people we spend most of our time with invade our souls in such a way that we begin to emulate them. Now, I don't know about you, but there are very few people in the world outside of our conclave that we create for believers that you really want to emulate in the world, right? So we got to be picky. As you go forth, there is one sure rival on this planet, doubt versus belief. Doubt always has a bigger team. Belief is never outnumbered, and it is never outworked. That's what we're going to work on today. 
your special forces, your inner circle. Those are the people who, as we say in the military, and I'm a civilian, but I heard it my whole life from my dad, they watch your six. Sometimes I eat too many biscuits and I have a 12. <laughs> but generally, they watch your backside. Thanks for getting that. I can hear some woman laughing over here. It's like, <laughs> probably because she can see that side of me. <laughs> and she said, I know in her mind, she's thinking, you better multiply. You know that's an 18. <laughs> I love you, whoever you are. Having an inner circle means just that. These are true believers of yours. These are the people who help you press against the doubt. And you know what doubt looks like, right? It always has something to say about somebody that's not good. Doubt loves to gossip and sow seeds of division, derision, and pain. And sometimes doubt can come in a really pretty package. Sometimes we date doubt. Doubt is cute. I was single once. Sometimes doubt comes in the form of a relative. That's complicated. But you know what you have to do with doubt? You got to outwork it. You got to outshout it. And you got to root it out. Isn't that what you said? You got to fire some people. Anybody ever fired anybody? Really not a whole lot of shows. Now, it doesn't mean that it happens on your job. Come on, somebody's had a, a firing someplace, right? You had to maybe tell a friend, you're not acting like my friend right now. No, really? Sometimes we don't do those things. Oh, I heard a shout. Sometimes we don't do this because it's uncomfortable. It's hard to tell people that you're on a mission and your mission is about goodness. No gossip allowed. It's about the truth telling. No fake news. What? Oh, yeah, okay. I thought maybe you guys fell asleep. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. There we go. It's about people around you who would make sacrifices for you without you even having to ask, because they get you. Now, I know it's hard sometimes to press against that. Get a spine, sunshine. That's what my dad used to say. He still says it every now and then. Get a spine, sunshine. I'm like, really? Yeah. And it really, once you kind of understand how belief in you lifts you up, not in a prideful sense, but in a powerful way to, to be able to do more that you were intended to do, you won't allow people in your inner circle to distract you anymore. They just won't even get in, so then you don't have to fire them. There is a way that you can meet someone and shake their hand and always be present and kind. That's necessary, because we all want a legacy, may as well have it be good. If somebody's going to hashtag your legacy, make sure it's good. It follows you forever. Have you ever tried to erase a hashtag online? So once you see how that feels, you will be particular. You'll say, oh, yeah, great to meet you, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Always be present and kind. But you don't have to invite them into your supper, into your circle, your dream zone. Now, I know from my X amount of years on the planet, you can wiki me and find out my real age, but I'm going to call it X. I know that we are here for a reason. And, and I don't mean a fleeting reason like, I'm here today to be with the Liberty students. No, 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 no. I'm here as part of your mission and you are here as part of mine. It is a divine mission. And not every place we go can we have this kind of conversation, so I feel so blessed that I can have it with you. I work in a place where I feel quite comfortable to say I'm strong in my faith. And when big news happens and I have to lean because it hurts, I hit my knees. I don't much care who sees me. I know it's necessary. It's part of who I am. So my inner circle may not always be yoked to me in exactly how I worship, but they do believe that there is a greater love. 
That's an unbreakable. You have to come up with your own list of unbreakables. I want to give you an example of how tough this can be and how important it is. So Jesus had 12. I only have four. Jesus had 12 true believers. And when he entered Jerusalem and he went to pray, he would tell his disciples, I'm going to be gone for a while. All I ask is that you stay awake. And he would go and he would be in conference with the Lord. And he would come back and everybody's like laid out, sleeping, snoring. I don't know if they actually said snoring in the Bible, but y'all know what I mean. They were out. They were dreaming. And they weren't dreaming about him. They were out. So he went away again. And he said, look, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to go pray. All I ask is that you stay awake for me. He came back. What were they? Asleep. Now, on this next one, I want you to say asleep with me. Yep, happened again. So the Lord gets ready to go, or Jesus, rather, gets ready to go pray with his Father, and he says, all I ask is that you stay awake. Now, of course, one, one among them was already sowing some other types of betrayal seeds, but the beginning of betrayal is when you ask somebody to be with you, and they can't stay awake. He comes back a third time, and they were asleep. And of course, we know that Judas turned him in with a kiss, and there began the journey that led to, well, resurrection. Now, the Lord had a bigger plan for him, but I, I just want to impart on you that if picking an inner squad is that hard for Jesus, how hard is it going to be for us? Whew. Did you get a load of that? If it didn't work out for him, <laughs> that means we have to be very particular and specific. So I'm, I didn't start with 12, I just have four. And I don't even ask them to stay completely awake, could you just keep one eye open? But here's the point, not everybody belongs. And when you realize that someone is not watching your six, not doing truth-telling, gossiping, that is the kiss of Judas. That gossip, whew, don't. Don't tolerate it. When you realize it, you have to renovate your squad. Hashtag that. <laughs> I'm renovating my squad, which has the people following you. Am I, am I being renovated? What? Is she renovating me? Am I out? If you don't know if you're in, you might be. <laughs> this is especially important because I want you all to think about this question for yourselves. Why am I here? What is my purpose? If I exit what doesn't get done, I'm giving you some clues on how you find your purpose. I was taught that in special forces situations, my dad was a combat pilot, he was not special forces, but he flew in small squadrons. You don't take 55 people with you, you only take like six or eight. And everybody has a job, a purpose, and so when one exits, you are trained to be able to fill in, but you're going to miss Bob. That's my dad, the colonel. You're going to miss him because even though you can fill in, he has a specific purpose. You realize the Lord created each one of us like that, right? If we get on the right squad, when we exit, they really miss us. Do you know what your purpose is? It's not an age that you realize it. It's life experience. And if you feel like you haven't figured it out, I'm glad you're here. Because this is a place that'll help you figure out your purpose. Liberty will put you to work in all the right ways. But you need people around you in smaller sets to work it out with you as well. You know people right now in your lives that haven't figured it out. They tend to be a little bit more aimless. 
If somebody recruits you to be on their inner circle, help them find their aim. Because it's just as important to have an inner circle as it is to be part of one. And they may not have all the same members, and that's okay. But reciprocity is important. I call it being clutch. I like it when somebody says, you're going to get this because you know where I work. If I were in a foxhole, I'd want Harris Faulkner. I won't let you down. I won't lie. I won't make you feel bad about yourself to puff myself up. I won't not show up. I'm present. I'll find a kind way to tell you the truth, but I'll tell you the truth. I'm clutch, yo. <laughs> My daughters laugh at that too. They're 11 and 8, and they, Mom, stop talking like that. You don't know what yo means. What? I invented yo. Yo? <sighs> so here we are, and we're working on our inner circle, and we're making sure that doubt is what? Outnumbered and outworked, and I argue outstaffed, because our inner circle is going to be strong. I call mine Team Harris. Now I am going to get to a second rule, but Emily, will you help me with this one? I need about, how many do I need, 10? I need 10 people to come up here. Come on up. When I get to 10, I'll be done. Now every man has gotten up, where are the ladies? Oh boy. When we get to 10, Make sure we get some ladies in there. Come on now. Did we get to 10? Oh, man. If we get to 11, they aren't getting a t-shirt. So here's the deal. I know at Liberty University, I can pretty much randomly pick a squad. Because all y'all are clutch. That's why you're here. And those who are hoping to apply on this seesaw. You better recognize who you're sitting next to. These people are special. Are they coming? I can hear them. They're all whispering. She's taller than I thought. She does have an 18. No, they're not thinking that. Hey, hi. Good to see you. All right. Nice bow tie. Hey, come on now. Hey. All right. Good to see you. Hello. Thanks for being here. They're the ladies. Hey. Hi. Hello! All right! Hi! All right! Here we go! What just happened? Is everything okay? No, no, he's like, no, 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 no! But you don't like that. All right, here we go. The circle. squad, okay? And I'm going to go down the line, and I'm going to ask each one of them a question, and I am curious to know how they're, and, and for coming along, you are honorary members of? All right, here we go. Now these are not going to be easy questions. Do you have a squad? No. Okay, so we're, we can help you with this. What's your purpose? If I'm lawyer girl. Oh, that's sweet. I'm the only one wearing a microphone, so <laughs> you couldn't hear it. <laughs> he wants to, can I tell him? There we go. What do you want me to say? To find a... Loyal girlfriend. Oh, that's not going to be a problem for you. All right. Now, I wasn't expecting... I wasn't expecting such... I wasn't expecting such a, a rich opportunity on first try. <laughs> now, you know how you do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to audition some people. No, I give them the sugar. You do what? I give them the sugar. You give them the sugar. With the sugar. <laughs>
your first name? JC. JC? JC. JC. All right, JC is trying to make my moment go sideways. So I, I dare not ask what the sugar is, because I know what it is in my house. I want to know whether or not you think you have the right people around you to help you with your goal. Well, there are definitely select people in my life who would definitely talk about this with. Only two or three people in my life know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I would say I definitely, a couple of people in this room, I would definitely go to Cons about this. Yeah, consider your squad, right? That you, squad. You've got I've, nine other members here who are And the shoe. And the shoe. <laughs> building your squad, this is JC by the way, we're getting to know each other. Part of building your squad is so that we recognize our squad. I get t-shirts for mine. Once you figure out who's going to help you find this right lady in your life, make sure that you are the right man. and it's a little bit more generic, but y'all are special, so I'm gonna wing it. Do you have a squad? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, what's your first name? Mark. Mark, all yeah. right. Uh, what are some things that you require of your squad? Just a couple. Oh, uh, trustworthiness. Okay. Yeah, I, I gotta be able to trust you. What else? Uh, gotta be over six feet. I can't, oh. I can't trust no short feet. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, I'm joking, so, I'm joking. so no, I'm Mark's joking. squad comes with a height requirement. <laughs> Uh, you, got, you got to take your relationship with the Lord seriously. I like that. Yeah, right? you got to. Yeah. Okay, so the point of this exercise, and I encourage all of you to do it probably with a number smaller than 10, because that could be time consuming, but these are your unbreakables, right? Um, and what I get from you, and I, I know this is true, you are focused and you have a mission. Your squad needs to know what your mission is, and so you're ready to share, right? Trustworthiness, trustworthiness is important, but that leads to what? Loyalty. And they have to seek the Lord. And they have to be over six feet tall. Good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I am six feet with heels. Hi, what's your name? I'm Emily. Emily, do you have a squad? Yes, I do. How many members are on your squad? Probably about six. That's a lot. Yeah. Right? What are, are you on like a team or something? I'm on the debate team. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Because normally, I mean, when you get north of four or five, you must be in something organized. Because that's a lot of work, right? Have you ever had to renovate your squad? All the time. Ooh. <laughs> Not really here, but in like high school, I definitely had to like all the time. I was like, nope, you got to go. And, and give me just some constructive words for when it's time to renovate. It's kind of like breaking up with someone. It's like, it's been great. I'm gonna go. <laughs> really, that works, right? And yeah. you can do that with all kindness. I like that. Good to meet you. Good luck with that. Hi, what's your name? Mary. Mary, do you have a squad? Uh, I'm, I'm working on it, but I have a few close friends. Yeah, it's, it is a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, do you have a dream or a purpose that you can identify? You don't have to share it, but I just wanna know if you do. Um, I'm trying to just live a life for God and just try to follow His plan for my life. Amen. Amen. Does your squad know that? I think that's what we're all aiming for. So yeah, that's if that's cool. our goal to uh, stay in God's plan for our lives and when we're all seeking the same goal, then that's what makes a good squad. You're a good member to have on a squad too. I picked some good ones. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm Arachi. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, let me see, I want to start with how many members are on your squad, if you have one. I do not have a squad. You don't? I used to oh, before. we can help with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you used to have a squad. Yeah. Let me not miss the story. It was like, uh, just me and my two other close friends, but uh -huh. the one girl, she... Uh, well, we don't want to yeah. get too identified. <laughs> She kind of just like lied to me and kind of uh, stole from yeah. me in a way, yeah. And you know where that comes from, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, the good Lord only made a list of 10 things for us to pay close attention to, and thou shall not covet is one of them. Yeah. And I know it talks about the wife, but it can be whatever your 
situation is important to you. So to you, this person was probably jealous. Yeah. yeah I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jealousy is the opposite of squad membership. Yeah. So, good job. And we will pray, and you will find a fantastic squad. I think there's some candidates up here. Well, hello, hey. Mr. Botan. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. He takes Liberty the mic. University. Do you want the mic? You want to? Uh, I'll hold it. Okay, what's, your, what's your first name? Samuel. Samuel, do you have a squad? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. How many people are on your inner circle? Oh, well, the inner circle. Well, I mean, definitely the gentleman on my hall and okay. common street. Thank oh you. Oh my goodness. Uh, they're great did he guys, just wonderful say common guys. Common sense? What did he say? No, 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 in Commons 3. Oh, okay. On my hall. <laughs> I was like, Common sense? I got you. Uh, what are your requirements of your squad? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, you gotta love to laugh. I mean, we can't be too depressed now. Just have fun, gotta laugh a little bit. Okay. And then, oh, it's, it's a big requirement. Come on. It Ma is. Making people laugh is. It's one of the most special things if you can no, do. it is true. Truly. And then, uh, you know, you got to believe that hard work pays off. Ooh. That's a big one for me. Like, ooh. Have you ever had to fire anybody? Have I had to fire anybody? Yeah, from your squad. <laughs> just between you and me? Oh, well, me and 12,000 12, people. Just, just between you and me and 12,000 people? Yeah. Have you ever had to do that? No. You just, you, you go through your life and you learn different things. It's like what Shakespeare said, that the world's a stage and all the people, entrances and exits. That's true. It's true. There's a refinement. My name is Christian. 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 Do you have a fan club? Do I, I think so. Yeah. Can I hear you guys again? All right. So this is good. This is a good teaching moment. Fans are great. Yeah. But your inner circle is tiny. Is it? So we, we love fanship. <laughs> it's not a question, Christian. We love fanship, but what we really love is that group that can help lift us to, through and to our dream zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you've got that? I believe I do. Okay. How many people are on your squad? I want to say there's a finite amount of people. Okay. But I'm definitely seeing some people that God has been placing in my life. Okay. Or some really awesome guys and gals. All right. I love your voice. You should do broadcasting. I'm a little, yeah. I'm a little congested right now. Oh, really? <laughs> Unbreakable. Something that if this does not exist, or if it does, uh, it's got to be in spades. What is it in your squad? That that, that needs to be there. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, it's a deal breaker for you. You have to be driven. All right. I like that. Look at that. Your first name. Franz. Franz. Good to meet you. Thank you very much. Y'all are, I love it. Nobody at my job does this. <laughs> I'm gonna take this back to Fox. You have a squad? Yes, I do. You know, I'm curious. Are all of your squad members uh, the same age or are some of them different? Different ages. Yeah, what, what are some specialties in terms of special forces, civilian-wise, that maybe a squad or two member has? I'd say, uh, I, I I treat them all as speedsters. As speedsters? Oh, I like that. Okay. I mean, do you have they somebody? All, they who... all have their individual specific okay. things about them that they thrive about. And you, and you so let them I, know that? I try the best I can. I like that. So they have a purpose in your life and they yes, know they what do. it is. Amen. Hi, what's your name? I'm Quinn. Hi, Quinn. Good to meet you. Like Tell me about your squad. Are there? Uh, people just like you? Are there men, women? What's your squad like? Um, I have, there's eight of us in my family, and so that's the core of my squad. Oh, wow. And that's so, a lot of people in one family. Yeah. It makes for a good squad. And then yeah. besides that, I have um, some really strong friends around me that uh, will tell me the hard things, too. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. All right, last one. I'm Harris. You are? Hannah. Hannah! to be here. I mean, your smile is contagious. Have you ever had to fire somebody who's in your inner circle? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's tough, right? Uh, yeah, it's really hard. Here's a question I haven't asked anybody yet. Is there somebody right now today that you might go up to and invite to be on your squad? You don't have to tell us who it is. <laughs> it's okay. 
I mean, I'm dying to know, but you don't have to tell me. I mean, but I mean, maybe somebody that you're like motivated now, yeah, I'm gonna go check out that person. I mean, yes. Yeah, and yeah. maybe volunteer to be on somebody else's. Yeah. Okay, great to see you guys. Emily, let's do the shirts. Give them an applause, please. You get shirts. This is, this is Emily, by the way. She traveled from New York City with me. And she's doing some social media about all of us here today because we're live on Facebook. So let's say hi to the world. And she's going to give out some Team Harris t-shirts. Guys, open them up. Meet my new honorary on the road Liberty University squad. I look lost back there. You guys, thank you so much. God bless. I appreciate it so much. So the purpose of that exercise is to show you that you can do this among yourselves and for each other. Let's get to the next rule. While we still have a minute or so to talk, it's important. It has to do with social media. Thank you. Once you get your special forces together, how you go forth is really important. I want you to unleash the power of integrity in your lives. Now that's easy to have on this campus because you have lots of reminders to walk in the name and the shadow of the Lord and to follow his example. And I think that when a lot of us are gathered together, the Lord blesses us with lots of reminders. But when we get outside those conclaves, that those protective areas for our belief system, we see temptation. I love social media. But it does rob us of a couple of things. Eye contact. When you don't keep eye contact on a regular basis, you lose accountability in a society. So we have to remind ourselves to look up from our phones and our devices every now and then lovingly to those people in the world around us so that they see our light. Collectively, our purpose is to show our light. We cannot be outshone by the light on our phones, okay? You gotta get that. That'll keep you from making mistakes online. And I don't care what anybody tells you, if you put out a post that you wish you could take back, you can't. You can delete it, you can be an IP expert, but I got guys at Fox News that can find it in 15 seconds, no matter what you did to scrub it. Integrity. Who would you want to judge you based on what you're putting out on social media? An employer, future potential employer? A professor? You better not run into Harris Faulkner. She's gonna hold you accountable. And you gotta do this for each other. I guarantee you that there is nothing online right now that can replace your ability to look at one another and say, I believe in you. Do it right now. I believe in you. 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 You know what that is? That's belief outnumbering and outworking doubt. That's what that is. All right. Thank you. Let's move on. Integrity is necessary because it is a non-negotiable in every situation. It is power filling and powerful. If you choose to take the high road, it is so empty, and it never rains there either. You can drive down the middle of the highway in your convertible on the high road. I invite you all to take it at every opportunity. And I know that we are faith-filled and faithful in this room, but temptation, whew, it's tough. And online when somebody picks a, a little Twitter this or that with you, don't you bark back at somebody who has fewer followers than you do. That just doesn't make any sense. Don't punch down, look up. Are you getting this? 
Because some of you are on your phones right now, and I encourage you to look up. Emily's got this. The world wants you to keep your head down and stay buried, so I guess no one rises. What would be the point of that? Why do you have a squad if y'all are going to text each other at dinner? You could have done that at home. When we get together, we are powerful, and there's a place for social media. Like I said, I love it. Instagram is my friend. I, I do find that Instagram is a little bit like more positive than the rest, so I'm kind of into that. But all of it can be a useful tool. You can't be a tool, though. That's the difference. Uh-oh. I made somebody mad. <laughs> I do have a microphone, but I can hear you, too. <laughs> yeah. You can't be owned by your phone. You decide when it's time to put a little... What's your name in the bright yellow shirt here? Your name is Miracle? Now see, you know what? That's right. God told me I would meet a miracle today. That's wild! <laughs> that is really wild. All right, Mr. Miracle. You decide when you're going to put your mir miraculous notes out. I can't even say that without laughing. That is fabulous. What is your first name? Now, you see how Joshua leads with his last name, because he knows it gets a rise out of everybody. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. Like, I just had a moment with you, and we're looking at each other. And, and later, Emily, get a picture of his shirt, because later I will Instagram about you. There is a place for social media, and I'm going to tell everybody that I met my miracle today. Oh! time? I'm okay? I'm checking, because the clock stopped. <laughs> and when the clock stopped, I didn't know if I could continue to talk. Y'all are funny. But you know what I love about that? You won't forget it. So think whatever you may think. And I encourage you to be kind and necessary with those thoughts. But I won't forget it either. So, integrity. Integrity is that part of you that no matter what happens, you're on a battlefield, you're with your squad, something incoming, a challenge comes, and you do not get distracted by the stuff people say and do. If you are going to live with integrity and unleash it in your life, these things happen. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples that have happened to me, and I'm sure you'll understand. So I was big in brownies when I was little. But I couldn't tie anything. And to get to the next level of Girl Scouts, you had to be able to make all these knots. So I thought maybe I'd do the 4-H thing, but I'm allergic to anything with fur. So, and my husband's pretty furry. <laughs> That's more than you needed to know. But you would see it if you met him. He's 6'4", and he's a hairy dude. So I had to try to figure out, well, how am I going to find my place? I'll just go for it with my knot tying, and I'll do a little farm time and see if I can be part of that. I'll take some antihistamines. That'll help. But I never got chosen to get to that next level of, of anything. And I would say my prayers at night, and I would be like, why don't I ever get chosen? And there were times when, as a little one, a young one, I was really tempted to be jealous of the other girls. And that's when you sow those seeds of really mean things and sometimes untruthful things, and I was starting to get practiced at that. And my mom pulled me aside one day and she said, I'm looking for somebody. I need somebody strong. I need somebody smart. Have you seen my daughter? Because I don't know who the heck you are. And she said, we need to get back to a place where I can call you mine and you can call me mom and we're on the same page. Let's pray, she said. And I was thinking all sorts of things about Patty and Debbie. I still remember their names, all those girls who got picked over me. And my mom could tell I wasn't really into the prayer moment, and she said, look, whatever you're feeling right now will not help you. 
put it aside. You cannot covet and you cannot hold anybody accountable for going for their dreams just because you feel sad inside. Let's find another thing to focus on. Let's work on you. What can you do? What do you bring to the table? And when you see that person, I don't care how it makes you feel inside, congratulate her and mean it. It's tough not to be picked sometimes. Those are the little places where we don't unleash integrity because we think nobody sees it. But just because someone doesn't see an action or a thought doesn't mean it's not there. And the true meaning of integrity is who we are in those moments when people cannot see what's going on with us. Who we are in those moments when the only thing somebody can offer us is their company. They can't give us a job promotion. They can't do what we want them to do in that moment, but they can be with us. Be thankful, openly grateful, congratulatory, thrilled that God is blessing another. And do you know what we do as believers? We wait. We're judged on how we wait. You're going to do a lot of waiting in your lives. Some of you are waiting for my speech to end. <laughs> I love that that gets claps. <laughs> but we're going to do a lot of waiting. And while we wait at the stoplight, in line at the grocery store, behind the person who just got the job promotion that we thought we were going to get, whatever, unleash that integrity and say these words to yourself. Oh, I am going to see another day. And one of those days will be marked for me. We got to do that. Now, there'll be some bigger times when your integrity is stressed or stretched. I want you to continue to take the high road on the smaller ones, on the everyday ones. Because when it's your opportunity, and we know this from Dr. King because it was one of his deal breakers, don't you stay silent when you know something bad is happening and you could make a difference by speaking up. That's a huge integrity test. You're laid bare, everybody's seeing you take the side of a group of people that nobody else believes in. I'm brown and a woman, so I can check a couple of those categories. I have a lot of LGBT friends. We can check more boxes. We could check boxes all day long for all the people who some people say they can't get along with or don't like or judge or whatever. When you step up for those people, that is unleashing your integrity. And sometimes the portal will come against you. Just stuff just starts flying at you. Sometimes that's my indication that I've made the right decision. But not everybody can take that kind of heat. Stay on the high road. Let it be your reflexive position when things test you. You know, some people reflexively lie. Have you met any of them? What'd you have for dinner? Oh, um, bacon and eggs. It's like, why can't you tell the truth about dinner? I dated a guy in college like that. I remember him. His name was Eric. <sighs> With a C and a K. do you need to make the cuss sound? I never could spell it. I couldn't remember. Is it the K come? Is it the C? Anyway, Eric would lie to you about what, you ha what he had for dinner, and I never could get that. I'm like, what are you? Well, it turns out he was lying about a whole lot of things, including his hometown. Like, I wasn't going to find that out? So strange. That was his reflexive position whenever he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. The nine rules of engagement require that your reflexive position be filled with integrity. That no matter what's going on, you're like, oh wait, there's the high road, let me get on it. Eh, eh, no traffic. Convertible Maybach, VW, doesn't matter, never rains. I'm there. All right. So I've given you two of the nine rules of engagement. Recruit your special forces. Unleash your integrity. And with the final few minutes that we have, and I mean very few, 
I'm going to give you a bonus third because it comes with a song that I want you to sing. Please sing loudly because I don't sing. Well, I used to, but I don't now because I talk too much. I used to be an anthem singer for the NFL. Let's move on. So, yeah, but when you talk, you stress your vocal cords, and so they finally retired me. But one of the rules has to do with when things don't work out. When things fall apart, believe that you have enough in you for victory. Because you've done all of these other things by getting the right people around you and making the right sorts of decisions and devising your mission and owning your moments with love, not pride. It's okay to take credit for what you do. I'm hitting some others here just to get to this last one. Think like a general. Now that's an interesting one. I hope you guys will pick up the book so you can learn some of the other ones. All about the military, lots of dad's military so, uh, stories, and thinking like a general is a key one. You'll figure out what that is. But when things fall apart, and on combat missions, they did, my dad had to, in a cockpit by himself, figure out how to get back to base in Vietnam. They'd gone a little bit too far out on that mission. And there were some incoming, and there were too few of them, and they weren't all going to make it back to the 210th Aviation Squadron, a very special Army group of pilots, because we'd been in Vietnam for so long, they were training guys who were coming into all of the divisions of the military to fly. We had to hit them from the air. They were taking our people into POW camps. We couldn't do much on the ground. So when things would fall apart, my dad would know for sure that he was enough that whatever the training had been, he had incredible spatial. Today, with his eyes closed, he can park a car better than I can with eight mirrors and some guides outside the car. But he believed that he'd been blessed to be enough. All of you are enough. Life is not going to be perfect, and remember where I started. Sometimes, because we are strong in our belief, it'll feel like the world is pressing against us. You are enough. You know why? Because we have God's light in us. So I, in these last couple of minutes, want to sing with you what I sang to my mom 14 months ago when she passed. She used to sing it to me every day that summer that I was having a hard time unleashing my integrity. We'd start the day out with this little light of mine. Would you guys sing it with me? Show the world your light. Now that's a great use for your phones. Ah, I love it when a plan comes together. Liberty University, thank you. From my family, Danica, who's eight, Bella, who's 11, my husband, Tony, I won't shout out his age, and my inner circle, we salute you. Please don't make me sing first. This little light of mine.
so much. Fantastic job. Man, go out to the world and make your light shine for Christ's glory. Amen? You guys are dismissed. We'll see you at the Toby Mac concert tomorrow night. Thank you.